From waste to wealth, with the positive spin-off of reducing the level of greenhouse gases in the Earth's atmosphere. EnviroServe's landfill gas flaring project is one of the first of its kind in South Africa. The Klokop landfill site here in Gauteng processes around 400,000 tons of waste per annum. Now landfill gas is a byproduct of a landfill site like this, contains around 50% methane, which is considered to be a much more harmful greenhouse gas than CO2. A network of wells has been installed across the waste dump to extract the hazardous gas. Every one tonne of methane gas extracted from the landfill site is worth 21 parts of carbon. So by converting the methane into carbon through the flaring station reduces the impact of the methane. What you see behind us are the flaring stations and we've got two of these flares on site. Klokorp's landfill gas project is one of 19 registered clean development mechanism projects in South Africa. Under the Kyoto Protocol, developed countries with carbon emission caps need to either pollute less or pay someone else to do so. The Clean Development Mechanism is a strategy that enables developed countries to meet their emission reduction commitments. How it works. Company A in a developing country invests in clean technology, improves energy efficiency or switches to cleaner energy sources. One certified emissions reduction credit or carbon credit is issued to the project developer for every ton of carbon dioxide that is not emitted. The carbon credit is sold to company B needing to reduce their emissions in a developed country. The net effect is positive because the atmosphere is a global resource. So one tonne of CO2 reduced in Africa is the same as if one tonne of CO2 had been reduced in Europe. Heng Sa, MD of Ecometrics, advises companies based in developing countries on how to implement CDM projects. It raises positive awareness when it comes to environmental uh, issues in the corporate uh, environment in, in developing countries. Whereas you know, most, most developing countries, when it comes to the environmental aspects of their business, uh, look at it as a regulatory confinement. You're not allowed to this, and you're not allowed to that. Um, or it is a, is a financial uh, issue whereby you have to pay because you did have these and these impacts on the environment. This is a completely different uh, approach. You will, if you do the right thing, you'll be financially awarded for it. That, that concept alone, um, I think, is a, is a major step forward. Klokorp alone is expected to generate 750,000 to 1 million carbon credits, valued at around 50 million rand over the project's lifetime. Returns like this have driven growth in the global carbon market, which has surged more than 1,000% in the past five years to $142 billion in 2010. From waste management to mining, CDM projects are being applied across sectors. Goldfield is set to be the world's first gold miner to sell carbon credits from the capture of methane from its Beatrix mine in South Africa's Free State province. 1.7 million credits have been sold in a forward contract worth 200 million rand. We saw a big opportunity in Beatrix because it does have quite a lot of methane. And uh, we saw this as a safety issue. And if we could extract the methane uh, out of the mine in a systematic way, uh, then we could also reduce the safety risk. And at the same time, uh, we can receive credits uh, by getting this methane flared. So it's really um, killing two birds with one stone. African CDM projects are also gaining traction. Kenya Power partnered with the Kenyan government and CFC Stanbeck Bank, a subsidiary of Standard Bank, to distribute 1.25 million energy-saving bulbs to Kenyan households last year. A win-win formula. Household energy bills fall and CO2 emissions drop by 40,000 tonnes per annum. Kenya Power's 100 million shillings in carbon credit revenue also keep tariff increases on hold for now. In this partnership with the Standard Bank, we are already looking at a few other possibilities. The second phase of the uh, efficient lighting project whereby we shall partner with government again and also we are discussing with our uh, development partners uh, the French Development Agency who are willing to assist us procure another 3.3 million lamps. The European Union, the largest buyer in the carbon market, has stipulated that countries not classified as least developed countries like South Africa need to register their CDM projects before the end of 2012 while least developed countries are exempt from this rule. Yeah, for example, you have the South African 
uh, green energy tariff. Uh, there's a whole tender process uh, on, the, on the way at the moment. Most of these projects want to also uh, participate in the carbon credit scheme. Because if you build a wind farm, you get from the government or from the single buyer office, you get a, a favorable electricity rate. And on top of that, you generate electricity which doesn't have the same carbon footprint as a ESCOM coal-fired power station would. That difference you can claim carbon credits for, provided you do that uh, before the end of 2012. So it's a rush to the gate for South African projects, but opportunity abounds for the rest of the continent. That's with its 33 least developed countries exempt from the 2012 deadline. They'll no doubt attract the next wave of investment in CDM projects. COP17, at the end of the year, will provide clarity on the future of the clean development mechanism. But back at Kleurkorp's landfill gas flaring site, methane capture continues and carbon revenue is in the bag until at least 2015.